I'm going to talk about uh, the moment that I arrived in Ghana where I was directing a major international project uh, that was dedicated to eradicating social stigmatization around HIV and AIDS. And the moment that I want to tell you about is the moment that I arrived rather than the completion of a very fine, successful, and I think inspiring program uh, that had a major impact on the ground. Uh, but it's not the conclusion. It was the introduction. Because when I arrived in Ghana, I was struck with the way in which they welcomed me. They said, in booming baritone voice from my original host, Albert Coombson, he said, Akwaba, and it's Twi for you are welcome. And this was profound. He spoke it, as did my other Ghanaian colleagues and friends as time went on. He spoke it with such forceful affirmation, with such civility, with such compelling sincerity that I thought, this greeting is deeply inflected with cultural priorities and values that are a lesson for me right off the top in terms of how I was going to approach one of the most complex issues facing not only Ghana at the time, but West Africa in general, and as you well know, other parts of Africa. So I, I want to talk about this project, but I want to get at it from what I learned from that greeting. You are welcome here. And so it's the small issues, what I call the low-tech wisdom, that I think is at the essence of positive and sustained social change. And so the place to begin is here. So what I want to talk to you about is how to take a taxi in Accra. Very, very important. And what you have to realize, obviously the performance of the taxis is somewhat uneven at times, but there is a, a little advice I'll give you as a, as, a, as a kind of encapsulation of what I'm referring to here. What is priority in a culture? So as you, realize, you might realize, there are no meters in the taxis, which means you are ill-equipped, if you're North American, to actually engage in creative barter around your fare. But you better do so Otherwise, you'll be a serious cultural disappointment. The key is the secret handshake. All right? And anyone who's been to West Africa in particular gets this. So you lean into the taxi. You have to lean in. And you greet your driver. And you tell your driver where you're going. But before you get into the price, you shake hands with your driver. It's Ghanaian civility, after all. Now, I really can't explain it in more complex diagrams. I wish I could. But, you know, if you want to practice with your neighbor here, you can. As you exit the handshake, show pressure on your middle finger. Very important. And as you are about to exit, snap the finger of your partner with vigor, even a flourish. Flick your wrist. <laughs> and if you want real cred, knock knuckles at the end of it. But that's, that's optional, depending on your age and inclination. So the, sec the secret handshake, right, you know? And uh, it's, it's actually a key and critical cultural ritual. And what happens is when you do that, you're ripped off only 50% rather than 100%. Right. So what do we learn from things like greetings that are so magnanimous, so affirming, so compelling? And what do we learn from getting down the, the, the secret handshake and using it all the time? Well. I suppose it's something that 
we have to look at and understand in terms of doing social issues communication. And I'm going to turn to something that, you know, I was thinking of cutting edge modern wisdom for you. And so I've come up with Francis Bacon, who I trust did not get into a taxi in Accra, but uh, whose uh, who, who, who's many credentials and, and accomplishments, which are, you know, quite incredible, uh, among those, that, that, that list, that litany of, of accomplishments and, and, and offices that he held, one of the most important was the fact that he was generally, he is generally considered the innovator of the scientific method, right? And he wrote this tome, which was published 46 years after his death. Uh, it was published in 1670, and, and it was called Silva Silvarum, A Natural History in Ten Centuries, just a humble enterprise. And what Francis Bacon said was something that sounded to me looking for a cue and an entree and an understanding and wisdom about social issues communication around HIV and AIDS. He said something that I think was profoundly unscientific. He said, as you may see great objects through small crannies and holes, so you may see great axioms of nature through small and contemptible instances. Does that sound like a scientist to you? Absolutely not. It sounds like a poet. It sounds like a painter. It sounds like a novelist. That's what that sounds like. As you can look through a small pinhole, so you can see a great expanse of land. As you are greeted by Ghanaians, you can see some priorities of culture dramatized through a very important gesture of civility. Contemptible, of course, meaning everyday and commonplace everyday and commonplace. None of us are going to actually believe that an apple fell on the head of Isaac Newton. But talk about small and contemptible instances. There was something in the observation of from zero acceleration velocity to the moment before impact that was profound. The revelatory moment which I am going to argue, and am arguing, is at the very essence of doing social issues communication. This is a complex time and moment. It is a time of techno-fetishism, where we all look to great technological interventions as solutions. And indeed, they are in many instances. We look at great and massive cultural, social, political, and economic transformations through digital culture, and we say, there, there is the source of our solution. Well, it's rather limited. It's the revelatory moment, the moment at which a particular dramatization of culture, if you pay attention, becomes your guide becomes your guide. So in Ghana, the black star, it's just, it's just a riveting, inspiring, and, 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 and brilliant graphic for a, a country that I'm absolutely in love with. In Ghana, there were a number of challenges that I had. First, the passion play that I was involved in, where sitting with a group of luminaries around a table devising the first education communication interventions on the ground to reduce stigmatization, which is corrosive, which is terrible, unspeakably terrible in its consequences, in marginalizing, socially isolating individuals to the extent that they're, rev that they're viewed as contaminants to the rest of culture. It's tragic has to be eradicated as a key and critical step forward. And I said, we've devised all of this brilliant and informed work together as partners, but we're missing 
homosexuality and HIV, where, where is that? And at that moment, there was the most uncomfortable shuffling around the table. And someone spoke up and said, with respect, Martin, we don't actually have homosexuality here in Ghana. And I said, that, that's extraordinary. You, Iran, uh, it's not company you necessarily want to be in. And in fact, uh, there was an admission that there was homosexuality, but it was brought there only by white Europeans. We worked around that. That was not the Ghanaian way to make an absolute. It was to, let's move forward. Let's discuss. Let's negotiate. And for me, let's be respectful. Let's understand what the complex landscape is about, cultural landscape. Let's understand what priorities are dramatized and demonstrated. And we resolved it. As my wonderful colleague Ruben Agor said in a, in a, a proverb, uh, it's not the one who wields the machete through the bush. It's the navigator. And he paid me a wonderful compliment that said, you're helping in our navigation. We will move forward. We will wield the machete. And, and in fact, on the most complex and difficult, seemingly impenetrable of issues, we move forward. There were many other lessons to be learned in Ghana that and, and that need to be extrapolated for all design and development of communication around urgent and critical social issues. This is not about individual behavior change. This is not about a marketing model. This is not about addressing people as consumers, but addressing them as full, engaged, participating citizens who have the agency and the custodianship over their own health and well-being. Vitally important. What communication needs to do is to de articulate, develop, and sustain covenants, covenants of social justice, nothing less. But you can't do it unless you attend to the small things, unless you embed yourself and properly understand and respect the cultural dimensions. So I have three principles. You need to be rigorous in your research. You've got to get after that research with the kind of discipline demonstrated by this young man. The idea is, of course, that to produce data that might be actually, if not irrefutable, at least authoritative. It will always be under challenge. Here's one for the modern era. Communicate with honesty. Communicate with integrity. Don't lie to people. We are surrounded by a, 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 a consumer culture, a political discourse that has become so debased at, at, at many moments that we are accustomed to the kind of spin, pitch, and promotion that is about not telling the truth. And the most important, I always wonder, what is it that unites us? What is a universal human trait? It is, without a doubt, speaking about irrefutability, we are a storytelling species. The essence, the essence of communication is telling a story. You need to tell the story. And in Ghana, who are and the Ghanaians being the most brilliant, the most brilliant of storytellers, we paid particular attention to this final principle. Those stories, those stories were compelling. They had impact. They articulated. They developed and they sustained the covenants of social justice by which and in which the eradication of social stigmatization around HIV and AIDS is deeply, deeply embedded. Thank you very much.